amigos! <laughs> Beard brand. Uh, my name's Charlie Hubble. I'm in Jams and Rogues Club. About to get my hair cut by Josh Yarn. Alright, so what are we doing then? Skin fade. Yeah, man. Side part. I, yeah, can I, um, I'll be, I'll be in my can I get a mid skin fade? And then, like, what I like to do is, like, have a, a part in around fade. here. And then kind of slick these apart. So this will be some weight getting back this way. And then get the pompadour on top. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. yeah, so what I do is just wet the hair down. And then he obviously wants a side part. So what I do is use the two for my comb. Just to run through the hair. And you can sort of like <laughs> define where you want to sort of go with it. It's only rough just for the time being, so I can clip of the sides. Yeah, you happy with like where the side parting is, yeah? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I like that. So, so I can just slick that back. And yeah. So this is pretty much what we're going for now. Like this is almost the finished look. Just literally now clipper in the sides, bring it nice and tight. Get rid of a little bit of the weight on the sides here. Then you've obviously got everything else flowing across. Yeah, pretty much what I do is just go in with the zero, do it to that temple height, and just pretty much just bring a baseline all the way around. What was that? Bring it all the way into the middle, and then go straight onto the other side. Do exactly the same again on the other side. Some people like to go all the way around the head, but I always find it's a bit easier to do one side first, then match it up in the middle. I always find sometimes I'm a bit like, a bit higher up on one side, so it's easier to adjust than it is to just like guess and go all the way around. <laughs> These are a good little investment as well. It's actually a uh, a clipper brush to clean the clipper for the hairs and stuff but I always find when you do like skin fades or just short short haircuts the hair seems to stick to the head a lot so with a little brush like this instead of using your comb this is a lot softer and it just gets rid of the hair so much more easier and I've just found it helps when you're doing fades just to get rid of all that excess hair that just builds up on the head but sometimes you could literally be trying to fade a section for a while thinking why is the uh, why is this like this the hair colour not changing but obviously it's just clumped up hair as soon as you wipe it it's gone. And what I do as well, where I've done the zero with the clippers, these are a lot, little bit shorter. So I go in flat with the uh, with these to get rid of that hair, then on that last bit just flick it out just so it doesn't create any more straight lines in the hair, so it starts to just blend it away naturally. So obviously if I go dead in, it just creates lines, so by just flicking that last bit out, it just starts to blend that hair away. So for me, I like to put in my zero line, then work my way down, especially with this style haircut, we're gonna go like with a foil, so it's gonna be real tight. Then once I've done all my zero, so I know that's literally faded all the way up, then I'll work my way upwards. Same again like the other clippers, just go in and then flick that last bit out just to start that little blend process. Because with the foils, if you go in a little bit too hard, you can easily create a deep, like a, a line in the hair. It shows up quite easily when it's uh, foils against normal hair. I found a good technique with these as well, rather than just constantly going up, I always go up and then I just go sideways to like buffer it out a little bit. So I find going sideways, it doesn't pick up every single hair, so you get like a little bit more of a blend with these. So now that I'm happy with my baseline, what I do is go in with a two, just to clear this weight away. Same again, going in and then flicking that last section out. Creates like a little faint line. Nothing that's too difficult to get out. But what this does for me is I go in with the two just so it clears it all away. And then now I can see that this is now what I need to fade with the clippers. The rest will be scissor work. Because otherwise you don't want to take it too high with the clippers. And then intrude into what actually the, the part of the scissor that you need to do. I 
and as well especially here we like to uh, with these classic cuts leave like to leave a lot of weight around this bottom section I mean some some places and people prefer their hair to be clippered quite high but with this sort of style it wouldn't look right if we took it too high so going for the classic look we keep a lot of the weight down by the occipital bone I always got taught to either do the fade below the bone or if you want to go a little bit higher then you've got to go above the bone if you go on it it sort of makes it a little bit difficult to fade out and you'll always look like there's a faint line because where the where the head sticks out that extra bit sometimes creates a bit of a shadow on the hair so same again you could be trying to fade it for a while and it's not going to change because it's just the way the, the head sort of protrudes sometimes depending on uh, how i feel or the type of haircut i do i sometimes change my way of fading just to obviously suit the customer that i'm doing usually i say i go for the zero first clear it with a two then work my way up and then normally at the end if I obviously have a quick little look around the head and I can see there's a few little patches I think could probably do with a little bit more touching up then obviously I'll tend to them. So yeah, after going through with the one and the one and a half as I can see that there's a half line all the way around the head. So just do that now. Just push the hair where it wants to go, put it onto the half and then literally just with the teeth just feather through ever so slightly. I don't want to go in too flat because I don't want to create any more lines. I literally just want to make it look like it's just blending that last little line in. You'll find as well with pretty much everyone's haircut really, with skin fades, the front section seems to fade a hell of a lot nicer than the back because you don't seem to have as much hair as you do right at the back of the head. So this front section always looks good, so you can do that in a couple of seconds. Then round here is like the main back section is where you want to focus on. It's always good just to have a clean station as well, being the person, just clean them down. No excess hair anywhere. Now that I've done the sides, and obviously this section here needs to be scissored in. We'll probably leave a lot of the length on the top because Charlie likes to obviously have it slick back. Don't want to go too short, otherwise Charlie it. Charlie long, loves right? the slick, mate. He loves it. He loves it long. He does. He likes it long. <laughs> I mean, he's got. There's a lot of girth to his head as well. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, comb, comb it into the style I want to go for. So I know now, looking in the mirror, like that's what I want to go for. All I need to know now is literally just to take this little section out here, just comb it down. Just pull it around so now I know literally this can go in and with a slip back haircut I don't want to cut too much out because when I comb it back it will sort of like feather its way in. So just pull it down, scissor and comb, just ever so slightly just flip through those bits of hair. So with his sort of style what I tend to do is leave a lot of weight on this section here so obviously when you comb it over it's going to overhang but for this time being when he styles it back that's the look you're going for but then sometimes you have it forward so you need the length to push forward i tend to do it with most clients i always say to them obviously what style are they after today then i'm like on a day-to-day -day basis what do you do with it and if they say oh, i just let it go messy then you've got to sort of uh, cut it to suit both styles really it's a lot of weight to the top section so what i do is just pull it out with this is just chip into it a little bit because i will take a little bit of weight out of it with the thinning scissors as well yeah, you can just sort of see the line just follow it down slightly just take a little bit out there so when you brush it back it goes quite high first and then you obviously bring that section around so it's a lot flatter to the head so obviously like i said before when he styles his hair differently he'll bring that stuff forward so if i cut that too tight to the head I've sort of given him a side part in, whereas with this set, with this style now, if you brush it all back for the slick back, which sometimes he likes to wear, it will blend in. You won't instantly know he's had a side part in and he's tried to change the style. So what I'm doing with the top, with some haircuts I normally go straight through, put like a baseline through the middle. Take a little bit out, but with this same again, he's obviously always changed it. So with that top section, he wants to grow it a little bit more, but that's just like dead weight. So literally just with the scissors, just point cut into it. Just gets rid of that little bit of dead hair. They always say it's good to encourage hair growth just by snipping off the ends. 
So nothing too blunt. I don't ever go in to go for the blunt cut. I just go for the chipping in, the point cutting. That's it. And again, just pull it across sideways, like cross check. Little bits that you missed. And then with this section, pull it out. And where I'm trying to keep a lot of that weight, it's still obviously got that like dead weight, so same again. Just chip into it. And you can see obviously there's a little bit there, so. Try not to cut your finger while you do it as well. So what we'll do now is just get the uh, thinners and then pretty much do what I did with the scissors, just flick through the haircut again. Not taking too much out, but while I do, rather than going in straight, I just like to feather through the sections. Just keep combing it and you can sort of see where the weight is. And same again. Just flick through it. She likes it. She likes it. We better do it. So what I'm pretty much doing with this sitting now is just going through the hair and not fully closing the scissors, but enough just to take some of it. And gradually, as you work through it, you can see obviously building up on the scissors. So what I'm doing with the with the hair dry now is just grab the front section up, roll it back a little bit. Just creates that volume. And like I said, with this side with all that weight on it, just by blow drying it up, it's saving that weight but still creating the shape of the haircut. So yeah, before I put any product in it, just style it how I want it. <laughs> so I'm just using the uh in the rest of Park Studio really ugly mate, but here. Just using the tea tree strong, sea salt like spray. Strong, strong set, isn't he? Yeah, oh, I love the smell of it. Minty fresh. So what I do with this section here, just a little bit of a twist. With a comb, just twist it and just drag it back. Just creates a little bit of a different look rather than just combing all the hair down. You get that slight wolverine look to him. Uh, duck feather look. That's literally it. Yeah, <laughs> so what I do now is just go around the haircut, just tidying up all the hairline, just getting rid of all those extra hairs, and Charlie obviously just growing his first uh, little hair there. No, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. We gotta film that thing. No, so yeah, just on, there. I can't find it. <laughs> just what? there. No, wait, wait, wait. Then take it off. I got it. Yeah. Whoa. No way. And that, my friend, and is you done? That is a haircut. That's a sweet haircut, man. Cheers, bro. That's a nice haircut, mate. It is an Amigo. Huh? That is from one Amigo to another Amigo. Careful, lady. Cool. Right, anyway, you're happy. I am. So we're pretty happy, my Amigos. Pretty happy. Stop with the Amigos. <laughs>
You're gonna be a YouTube sensation now, man. You end up staying around this. No, I got funny enough actually. I got a uh, taxi. Yeah. No, I didn't get taxi. <laughs> I was part of it. I was like, on this group on Facebook. Mm. And it's like born from full lift. Okay. I'm yeah. on there. I literally, within five minutes, there's someone like, yeah, I come. It's like two in the morning. Oh my god. So I was like, yeah, I come pick you up. It's How much did that cost you? Ten quid. Oh really? Yeah. Mm. All right. That's the detailer part done. I'd like to use some talcum powder just to get all these hairs off that are stuck to him because of this insane heat and it also softens up, like, softens up the hairs and makes it easier to go over with the foils. And his foils, hold them back to front. What I like to do is at the very bottom of the neck, underneath the O-bone, just keep the tension real nice and tight. Make it real firm. And as I work my way up the head, just slowly release the tension and it'll slowly fade out. So now that I've just gone over the O-bone, I've really released the tension now and I'm even going over at an angle so it doesn't create a line. If I kept the full wheel straight, it would have just created a line. So going at an angle, just gets rid of it. Now I'm over to my uh, wall icons, and I'm just gonna put a second line above my detailer line, about a width of thumb above it. The reason it's gonna be a width of a thumb is just so in between the two lines, I can fit in a 0.5 guard and a 0.25, and that should blend it out. Same wall icon, 0.5, and I'm just going to go underneath that one line that I just put in. I've now opened up, opened up my wall clippers to like a 0.25. The way you can judge if it's a 0.25 is that's closed, that's open. That's 0.25, that's in between both. Mm. Keep the skin taut. And then just flick that detailer line. And now I'm actually going to fully close my clippers, so it's now zero. And where that detailer line is, I'm going to keep the skin taut again, and I'm actually going to go in at an angle. So only the, only the corner of my clippers is hitting the line, and I'm just trying to break it up. Now I've got my balding um, clippers, my wall balding clippers, and I'm actually going to use the fine tooth side of my comb. Dig in, keep the comb square to the head, and just clip over the comb. So the way we're going to be cutting this is we're going to be going to comb it over and I'm just basically going to blend in the back and sides here and not take too much length off the fringe. This is going to be our longest point so it can sit quite far back. So what I'm going to do, stay there cameraman, I'm going to be taking it in like this. So it's shorter at the back and it gradually gets longer as it gets to the front. 
do I do? I call you cameraman instead of Carlos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a section straight down the middle. Comb all this out of the way. I don't need that. Straight down the middle. Pick it all up and I'll start off at the back. Sweet. So it's going short. And as I work towards the face, I'm going to gradually pull it longer and longer. What I'm then going to do is take that center, take some of the right, pull them straight up. There's my guide. Clean across. Take the center, take some of the right, pull it up. See that small point there? That's the guide. Straight across. Sweet. Now this is the left. Mind blown. Except this time, on the left, I'm going to angle it again. So I'm going to now pull this higher, meaning my fingers are now at that kind of level. So it's getting longer as it gets to the left. There's my guide. Straight across. The reason I'm making it longer on the left is so that it can reach over and sweep onto the right. It's the next level angles. I didn't do algebra for nothing, mate. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've dried the hair off I just see around this area here, where the hair comes over and connects to the side, there's a little bit of weight there. So I'm just gonna get my uh, thinning shears, get my wide tooth comb, and just go through it. What this does is just removes a little bit more bulk. Makes it sit a little bit nicer, a little bit more flush. And we are sorted. Do you want any wax in the mat? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Do you want to pop your shades on, see if you like the lamp for? I'll grab the wax. Yeah. Can't believe it. Sweet man. So we just got that mid to high skin fade. And then the hair's just nicely coming over and sitting over. Nice one, bro. Yeah. Lovely. Gorgeous. What's up, beard brand? Charlie here, got Elliot in the chair. We're doing a mid skin fade, parting on the left and pump it over to the right. So what I'm gonna do to start off with this madness of hair, so I'm just gonna section it away. I don't need to deal with this just yet. I just wanna focus on these back and sides. So let's just clip that out of my way. The way I determine where to section the hair away, what's back and sides and what's yeah. top, is that I like to go just below. So you see where the hairline is, it kind of goes into like a corner here. Go straight down, there's like a 90 degree corner. Yeah, I like to go just below the corner. So before I uh, put in any guidelines or anything like that, his hair's just too thick now to, to see where my zero line or anything like that would be. So what I'm gonna do is get my matador comb, get my wall bolding clippers and just remove the bulk. Keep the spine of the comb against his head and just like graduate it out so it's longer at the top. This is removing all of that bulk and I'm gonna be able to see what I can do. Just follow that guideline all the way down. As I get to the back of the head, I angle my comb down. That is satisfaction. <laughs> Just getting all that hair and just clipping it off. Satisfying. 
The thickness of the, this matador comb is about the equivalent, equivalent of a grade two. So now I can actually see shape to the head. Got it in short. What I've done on the mountain is I'm going to take it in shorter and we've gradually got longer as we've gone up. And I can actually see shape now. My one and a half guard, fully closed. Just brush the hair down. Now let's start putting in that baseline. Man, your head's gonna feel so much lighter when you leave it. Like, you're gonna feel breeze against your skin again. I have to go like down a couple of notches on the hat side. Yeah, right, yeah, you probably will do actually. Going down to a skin fade. Nice. So what I've done, cleared the weight, put in my one and a half guard line. Now detailers and this. I'm gonna flip them around, put my thumb on that little spot there. I'm gonna start just below the occipital bone and just go straight across. It's a straight line. Clear all that hair. The reason I uh, drilled in my line before clearing all this is just so I know how high I want to go. So I know it's nice and even. Do you want your beard into a point, Elliot? Or sort of you're doing your beard when you get home? Uh, yeah, 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 that'd be cool, man. Put it into a point, yeah? Lovely jubbly. So we've just agreed that we're going to be putting into a point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off putting my guideline, so temple's about here. I'm just going to go below it. Follow your way around the ear, and then connect up with that original line. The way you determine like where to put in that point, that line, you can see where this, his beard naturally grows back. You see like these short stubbly parts. You can see this line just goes all the way straight up. So all I've done is I've just followed it. I'll do that again more clear on the other side. Just so you get a good idea on how to do it. Find the temple, put your guideline just below it, and just connect yourself to the line down there, arcing your way around the ear. Sweet, so to put the beard into the point, what I'm going to do is you can see where the regrowth here is, but you can see that line just there. And just follow this guideline. There you go. That line nicely follows all the way to the top. Now we're off to the uh, wall foils. Flip them over. A lot of tension at the bottom of the uh, neck. And as we work our way up to the guideline, slowly release the tension and flick out. This will just uh, avoid any lines being caused by the foils. To work your way around the beard and being careful, what I like to do is flip them this way around and only use the corner of them. Just to work your way around. Hold the ear, and just dab it down. Nice, so where our one and a half line is, and I'm just gonna go straight one guard and go just underneath it. Not holding the clippers too flat, kind of flicking them. Now, off my uh, 0.5 guard, and I'm now just gonna flick, flick below that one line that I just put in. Again, not keeping the clippers flat at an angle. 
flick away that line. We're now got no guard, but what I'm going to do is instead of it being closed and fully open as a 0.5, I'm going to do just between, which is a 0.25. I'm going to like all the other guards, just don't hold it flat, flick it. The only thing you might want to do differently now that on no guard is just keep the skin taut. And there we go, the line is now disappearing. So that's the uh, lower part of the fade then. Now, just go back to your one and a half guard, fully open it so it's pretty much a two. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna flick away at this one and a half line and then we're just gonna go scissors. I've swapped my brush to a comb now just because I like to comb it down into the clippers, just feed it in there. The reason we're doing this instead of just straight away using scissors or clipper over comb is that I believe taking them a bit longer makes it a bit easier when we do our scissor work. Now I'll just wet down that weight that we've left on the sides and just scissor over comb it away. Using the uh, wide teeth side of my comb, picking the hair up, pulling it out, and away it goes. Moving on to the uh, top now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to wet it all down, comb it down into the, uh, the natural hair growth pattern. Wants the uh, parting on the left side of the head, so you've just got to keep that in mind. He can't see a thing now, though. He is blind. Oh, there he is. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm just sectioning where I want the parting. That feels about right. The way you can judge it is just. You don't want to go too far over the hairline. Take that part in line all the way back to the crown. So now that I've uh, taken that part into the crown and I'm just combing the hair where the crown wants to sit, this hair all wants to go backwards back here. That's how that naturally wants to sit. Where the crown is and all that wants to go forwards and up and over. So what I'm going to do, start off at the crown, take my first section and just pull it out. You can see where I've left off with the scissor over comb. There's a short part, there's the longest. Connected and I'm going to do that all the way around. Don't know if you can see that in there, but there's the shortest point down there, and all this needs to go. Shortest point. Now that I've connected this side, what I'm going to do is just go over the line, just take my next section, keeping the same angle of going across to the left. Sweet, so there's my next section. Now, straight across, comb, pick it up, and there we go. There's my guideline. This is what I need to cut. Straight across. So 
So now we're getting to the front of the hairline. What I'm going to do is, as I comb up and pick it up, I'm actually going to pull it backwards. And because we want this to slide ever so slightly backwards. Final section. Comb all that over. Just comb that out my way. Pick this up. And as you pick up, you pull back just to make it a little bit longer at the front. Shortest point, this is what needs to be done. Straight across. It's now connected. What I like to do with the front piece is just to, I feel like it makes it a little bit easier to style and takes rid of a bit of that bulk. What you do is you see at the very front of the hairline here, well, let me just dust him down. Got like the widow's peak here, the very front. What I like to do is get the tooth of my comb, take that, cut straight across, comb that down. As you can tell, it's still pretty long, it's still in his eyes. Let's make this sit a bit nicer. You grab it. You just angle it down. Point cut it. Makes it fit shape a little bit nicer. Now instead of going one more level up, what I do is I now flip back over to the wide side, put my, put my comb right on that line, pick it up, and just chip into it. Comb it back. Same again, on the line, pick it up. Chip into it. Where the part in line is, wide tooth comb. Just go through it and point cut it. As I do, as I, as I go in, I go in, open scissor, and as I pull out, I close. That kind of motion. What this does is add a bit of texture and takes out some of the weight. Now I've got my wide tooth comb, my thinning shears, and I'm just going to take out some of the bulk in the parting. These are just the finishing touches. I saw a line today, which means the changing. Mine! I'm trying to. He's always sitting. At the end of the day, he's going to turn it on. Yeah. So now we've finished off the haircut, I'm going to put in some products. I'm actually going to use the Tea Tree uh, Beard Brown Salt Spray. Uh. Matte dry effect. Comb through the hair as I put it in, in the direction that I want it to sit. Finishing the haircut off with just some nice medium shine pomade. Wash my hands. Yeah, sweet rare. So all we've done is just take it down to the skin and just fade away out with the part on the left. All oh, that be yeah, beautiful English tan lines right there. Nice one, bro. Nice. Happy. Charlie at Zero Rhythm Roads. I own a pub and also a financial advisor. And I've uh, come up with these guys for the last few months. And um, I keep coming back for some reason. So, what we're going to do with Adrian's hair, we're going to do a, a 0.5, probably about midway to the temple. And we're just going to blend our way up. Probably going to stop the clippers about here and then scissor cut to blend these bits into the top. And then maybe around the edges, do just a very light zero, just to taper it in at the neck. So what I've done, I've got my, uh, my wool, wool clippers, and I'm just starting off with a 0.5 guard, closed, and I'm just gonna hold it in reverse, 
I'm putting my line. The reason I'm holding it back to front is so I can get that a little bit closer and I can just pretty much like pencil draw in my line. I know for a fact that this line I'm just drawing is obviously a 0 0.5. So above this line, I just got to fade out. As I go around to the occipital bone, I've dipped down to go around it. Now I'm going to angle myself back up and realign myself with the temple. Just got my point 0.5. What I like to tend to do with beards is I like to have them in a point. We'll be doing a beard trim as well, so I'll get out the cut throat razor and I'll just line that up. I've now swapped over to my guard one, uh, fully close still, and I'm now just going to hold it at like a 90 degree, like that, and I'm just going to flick, flick the line. What, holding your clippers at 90 degrees, what that basically does is that it makes it that a little bit longer. Just very slight. So if I held that flat, that is actually shorter than that. The reason I want it that little bit longer is because it's going to make it easier for me to blend out this second line that I've just made here. Sweet. So now I've done that, I've actually gone back to my 0.5 guard now and I'm going to fully open it. So I've now got two lines. I've got this very faint 0.5 line that I drilled in earlier, and now I've got this one, one line that I've flicked. Having this fully open, actually I'm maybe a little bit close, I'm gonna hold it flat, and I'm gonna flick away the rest of this line. Keep the skin taut, just to make sure I really get in there. The only thing I've got to worry about as doing this is I make sure I don't push too high. If I go too high, I'm going to hit this line and it's just going to make all the hair short. I don't want to go that high. As I flick up, I actually kind of, as I'm holding a flat, I kind of U, I, I, I U it, like that. Yeah, man. We're just left with one line, now just got to get that one out. I'm actually going to go for just no guard, completely closed, and get out of my walk home. What I know, the reason I do this technique is if I hold this flat, this is a grade one. Very similar to what I did before when I flicked it. So this is the same length as that there. If I dig it in and then slowly angle it out, the hair's going to get longer. The more I angle it, the longer it gets. So I'm going to take out rid of that weight. <laughs> the reason, uh, reason behind me keep going over the same section is because every time I'm, I'm going a little bit higher and I'm angling my comb that little bit more. So, clean off, a little bit higher, clean off. And you can see here, that line has now slowly faded out, whereas here where I have not been, my line is still there. So line, and then this is where I clip over comb, slowly disappeared. Instead of going left to right, I'm now going up and down. This is just to make sure I really get in there. Get those fine individual hairs. Yeah, yeah. If that was the 
Again, just like when I put that initial 0.5 line, I dip down, doing the exact same with my comb. So like here, I'm holding it pretty much in line. And as I've gone to here, I might actually slightly dip down. That was just to fade around that occipital bone. All I'm gonna do is just like weight line here. Scissor over came. Wet that down. Reason behind doing scissor over comb or over any other technique is one, obviously, personal preference. And two, I feel like it gives it a softer edge. So, what I'm going to do is use the fine teeth of my comb and I'm going to keep a static blade. Basically, all that means is I'm going to keep this blade here, the one that's holded up by my ring finger. So, I'm just going to put my thumb in and just do that. Keep it nice and static, nice and controlled at that pace. The reason I'm only using my thumb is just, I'm keeping nice and steady control. As I'm combing up the head, I'm slowly pulling my comb away from it. So well, now that I've scissor overcomed, I've actually, you can still faintly see there's still a weight line. The reason I've left that there is so when I unclip the sock, and uh, I can pull them both together, and I can connect the sides to the top, like that, like so. Before I move on to the top though, if there's any impurities on the, side, on the back and sides, like there's some random weight lines, if you look closely, some around here, I just like the holes, the scissors flat to the head like that. Obviously I'm going to move his ear because there's a slight line there. Hold it flat, I'm just going to point cut it. Reason behind this is because it's just breaking up that line. Sweet. So now we're actually blending the sides to the top. So you can see where I scissor over comes and I left that a little bit longer. So I just need to connect the shortest piece to this longest piece. Sweet. Just blends it together. So that weight line I did leave, it's now gone. Yeah, I thought that too. Same on the sides, shortest point, longest point. Just connect them up. Normally I just whip out the clippers, just buzz cut it in and out. But obviously the camera's on. You love the camera, so. It's been following me everywhere today. It's been following you everywhere. So what I'm going to do is start off at the back, just work my way forward, taking sections. Pick up the side where I connected it, shortest point. And now the top is officially connected on the sides. Just because it is quite curly hair. I do like a bit of point cut. You do like a bit of point cut, obviously to get some texture in there. But I'm initially going to club cut, just so I can connect the sides, get a nice baseline. Don't forget the point cut. Oh, I won't point cut. I'm actually over directing the fringe now, pulling it back. Basically what all over directing does is make it a bit longer. Still connecting it. My baseline, just a bit longer. And I'll take it in an opposite direction. So now I've got my shortest point there, and this is the very front of the hairline, this is the fringe. I will actually be point cutting this. 
The reason behind the point cutting is just to add some texture and I don't want to take it too short. Not on this fringe. Do a massive, massive forehead. You don't want to show that. Yeah. <laughs> now that we've taken it down to the desired length that I choose, we're just going to now actually texture it. So this is where I'm point cutting. So before I club cut, just to get my base line, normally people would point cut just to add texture. But I wanted to make sure I got that line first. How I'm gonna add texture. Just came and uh, point cut. As I go in, I'll do it slower. I go in and I only close the scissors as I pull out. That basically like feathers the hair. It's not gonna leave massive missing chunks of hair in his head. All the hair that I've been cutting off, you can see it's just collected in my comb. You just... As you can see, as I make my way to the arch of the lip, I like angle it down slightly. This is so they can eat food again without getting all caught in his mouth. So now we actually trim the beard itself, get out my wall comb, anything with wide teeth really, and just comb it out ever so slightly. And every hair that's not in line because we want that nice curved shape, I just cut back in. Again, I'm going to hold my hand just to stabilize it. Keep this blade still, I don't need to move it. All I need to do is move my thumb so I've got full control. And visually, I can see what hairs need to be trimmed back. Change my angle just so I can get that nice curved shape. As long as my hand is perfectly still and controlled, you'll be all right. I won't cut his face, I won't cut his ear, I'll be all right. The reason I'm using scissors instead of clippers is I can stop it, but I've got full control. If I use clippers, we've actually got to turn them off and I may not even turn them off in time and you may have a chunk out of his beard. Whereas scissors, full control. Pretty much treating my scissors as if they were clippers. 
constantly changing the angle of my scissors due to just a comfortable hold and to get that nice round shape. Lovely. So now you can see I've just got rid of all those random flyaways and I've got that rounded shape again. It's just a cooling gel. Get around the hairline, the beard line. I just like to flick out that hairline, just tapers it a little bit. Just dapper down Matt Clayman. Nice natural, messy look. What's up, Beard Brand? It's me, Charlie Abel, Jungle Drones Club. There's Mash. Hey! And <laughs> 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 we're about to cut Jack's hair. Let go. So, wait, to start off the skin fade, I'm going in with my wall detailers. Just going to put in my baseline. I'm going to take my baseline just on the temple. And as I work my way around the head, I'm going to dip down to the O-bone. Now that I've hit the O-bone, what I like to do is I like to go straight across. Get a nice level line underneath the O-bone. Then start again. <laughs> now I'm on the other side, start at the temple again, work my way around and I'm just going to match up with the line that I've previously made. I wasn't going to hear that. I'm here all day, I've got no car, nothing. So, do you want those, sir? Yeah. Sweet, now what I like to do is put a bit of talcum powder on the uh, on the neck brush. <laughs> what this does is that it gets rid of all the hairs that are stuck to the skin. It gives me a nice fresh canvas and when I go over the foils it just makes it that little bit softer, that little bit nicer. With the foils, I like to keep a bit of tension at the very bottom of the neck. Oh no. Get married tomorrow. Yeah, he's saying he's come here in the morning. As I make my way up the head, I like to just slightly flick out. So I don't create any lines with the foils. Sometimes you can find it easier if you go in at an angle. Instead of going in flat like that, doing at an angle, that can help erase any lines. Now I've got my wall bolding, and my 0.5 guard. Bolding. And I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna say, I'd say that's a little bit less than a finger's width above that detailer line. Oh no, that's pretty much on. Actually a little bit less. But that's a good way to judge. The reason I'm taking it about a finger's width is so it leaves me some room in between the two lines to fade them together. 
Now I moved over to my one guard and my bowling clippers. And I'm just flicking above that 0.59. I don't know the options. Give me a vegetarian option and I'll take it. Same as whenever you order from on the street. I've now gone back to my icons, put my 0.5 guard on, and I'm just flicking above the 0.5 line that was on my bowling clippers. The reason I'm using two different clippers is that because they're two different blades and that makes them two different lengths, even if it's the same guard. I'm Oh, Felicia, you're going to be able to cut your own hair. I'll live in it. Hey, absolutely. All you need to do is just um, buy all the equipment that I've been using, and you can do this yourself. You too can make I'll this happen. Like I'm now taking off my 0.5 guard on my icons, and I've just got the lever fully closed, and I'm working that detailer line. Hey Carlos, we actually have a few mums that have come in here to get their kids cuts and they actually watch the videos. How is that? Cool. Mums. Nuns. Nuns and mums. Was it on Instagram? Was it on YouTube? YouTube. Yeah. I've now got my, uh, my one guard and I'm just going to quarter open it. So it's like a 1.25. Final part of the uh, fade, what I'm going to do is clip her over comb with my bolding clippers just above where I left off with the one guard on the icons. And then I'll move to scissor over comb. So what I've done now is I've just wet it down and I'm going to do some scissor over comb just to finish off the back and sides. And then we'll move on to the top. So with Jack's hair, he likes to have it all forwards, quite messy and choppy, but then with the fringe, he just wants to flick it over to the right. So what I'm going to do is where the crown is, section off to both recedes of the hairline. Don't worry Jack, you're not receding, you've got a beautiful hairline. Now that I've point cutted the sides and blended in, blend it in with the sides, I'm just going to comb it all forwards. I'm now going to take a section from left to right, straight across, pick up my section, and all that should be left is hair in the middle, really, that I need to cut. Yep. See that short point there? No. You don't? Okay. Yeah, I do. You do? Short point. Point cut along. Now there's my other short point right there. Sweet. Putting a little bit more texture and then we'll dry it off. You guys don't even know me. What I'm doing here is just going with the hair growth pattern, combing forward and just point cutting. The way I'm not taking chunks out of the hair is that I'm only closing my scissors as I pull out. So I'm in, in, and then pull out. How's that, Jack, man? Yeah, it's good, mate. Nice one. I'll go grab some Mac Clay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. When it comes to styling the hair with products, what I like to do is just get the product in there first. Don't worry about styling it, just make sure it's in there, especially at the roots. It'll hold it for the rest of the day. Look at that. <laughs> What's that guy from... Uh, Jimmy Neutron? Home Alone, the brother. Home Alone. <laughs> Oh, I have no idea. Buzz. Buzz. <laughs> Buzz, that's it. Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo, yeah. No, it's more Buzz. I was thinking it was more like maybe Jimmy Neutron ish kind of thing. That's not nice, is it? That's not nice. That's nice, son. You're nice. Sweet man, how's that feeling? Yes, yeah, good man. Nice, wash my hands. <laughs> I think so, did you do that?
James, I'm in Gentleman and Brogue. And what we're going to be doing for James is we're actually going to be just doing the back and side. We're going to be leaving this alone. What he wants to eventually grow this up into is he wants to have like a, a wedge kind of thing where it's going to kind of go over, similar to a mod kind of cut where it's just all forwards, all messy, like a full fringe and full around. So we're just doing the back and side for James. And that's going to be a high skin phase. Cool. Sweet. Let's do this. I'm going to start off by sectioning off this top because we're just not going to touch that. This is what we want this to hang over. Sweet. So what I like to do with my high skin fades is start off with my detailers and just put in my initial zero line. Use the foil ones underneath the fade. And what I tend to do, and what I uh, normally do in my videos, is like I do a uh, detailers, my zero line, and then just a bit above I'll put my one guard. But with this haircut, because it's quite thick, and quite full and he wants to have that wedge I'm actually going to start off short with my zero and then I'm just going to work my way up I'm not going to do my uh, one guard I'm just going to work my way up instead of working in between yeah. dip my way down as I got to the occipital bone There's 101 ways to do a fade, and it's all about finding the way that's comfortable for you. I, throughout, throughout a day of cutting hair, I will probably do 10 skin fades, but I will try my best to try and mix it up and do different techniques, try and improve in different techniques. There's techniques that I've seen. I learned them from going to conventions or I learned from the boys in here. There's one technique that I haven't actually learned, and that's the one that Mahesh does, is where he actually uses probably just one guard and one guard only for a skin fade. He'll use a zero and he'll go in with a zero, and then from there he'll just keep the clippers parallel and he'll just work his way up off the scalp, so on the scalp and then off the scalp. That's a technique that I'm yet to uh, yet to do. But there's techniques such as like the hard grind boys. This is actually kind of a variation of theirs where you just work your way up from shortest. So you go as short as you can and then you just get longer and longer. So you go zero, zero point five, one, one point five, and then two, two point five. Whereas there's other barbers, like Darren Pittman, he goes in two and a half, two, works his way down. Basically, with the complete opposite, he gets the same effect. There's a technique that I've seen uh, myself and uh, Craig do, is where you start off with, uh, you actually do two lines. Where you do your zero line, you do your one line, so you've now got two lines and a haircut, and you just work the gap in two. And the soils. Keep it nice and tight for the bottom of the neck. Press really hard, not too hard so it hurts them. And then as you work your way up the head, you just flick out. So lots of tension. As I work up, start to release the tension. Get in tight and then flick. Because his hair's so thick, you can see that it's actually created a line with the foils. Even though I was flicking out, there's still like a line there. So what you do is you just flip the clips around, only using the primarily the bottom one. And you just flip it up.
to it. Wall icons, no guard, just completely open. And I'm just going to flick at that line. Now I'm going to just put it to halfway, so that's now a 0 0.25. Even if this isn't the normal way you fade, sometimes just give it a shot, put yourself out there. It's all about trying new things, trying new styles. You never know, you might be fading from longest to shortest, and that's just the way you've been taught, that's the way you, uh, you've you been taught, and that's all you know how to cut hair. Try and just put, put yourself out there and see, see if this works out better for you. If you're cutting, say, nine hours a day, and you're doing the same way to skin fade for those nine hours, it's going to get a bit boring and a bit tedious. You want to mix it up a little bit. And even if you're maybe not good at it, challenge yourself to get good at this way of fading, and it'll improve you as a barber. Some shops actually have a specific way of how they cut hair, and they may say, "Sorry, we don't we don't cut hair from longest to shortest. We uh, we only like to do our phase this way. This is our product." And you're like, "That's fine. I know how to cut like that. I can cut like that." Now look at that new line. And we've still got all that weight left at the top, which is pretty sweet, it's what we want. Because he's going to wear his top with a lot of, uh, of weight and a lot of length. So he wants it to go with a full fringe and down the sides. So we're going to try and leave him with some weight. So you're not cutting the top? Oh, the, oh, the top of the haircut? Yeah. No. Just back and sides. I'm just going to be using the uh, wide side. Pick up my section. <laughs> now, just point cutting it. This is actually removing some of the weight line. I don't want to leave him with too much of a wedge. Hello, my name's Simon. I'm here at Gentlemen's and Rogues Club to get my beer trimmed by Charlie. Sweet. Let's do this. Sweet. So what we're doing here for Simon is he just just described that he would like his beard to be uh, faded and blended in to with his hair. Also, he wants to go for more of a square shape. Square shape meaning sides here, we're just gonna go straight down, so any of the flyaways, we're just gonna take them clean, squared off, 
and the underneath we're just going to box it, give like a nice strong box beard. And a little bit off that moustache so we can eat again. So what I'm going to start off doing is with the detailers, brush the beard down. and just sharpen up the angles. I like to work on the outside, make sure I get my, my borderline all sharpened up before I work on the bed. Take this straight down, to give them that box finish. Can you just look up from them? Get those neck hairs. So what, what I've just done there is that I've just given him that 90 degree corner there from where the, the natural beard line sits. So I can see that the hair stops growing about here. So I'm just going to corner it off. I want to make it as square as possible. Nice. Got my wall icons. Got my one guard and I've opened it up to a one and a half. I'm actually going to keep the skin taut and just flick for where the uh, bottom half of the tragus is. A good way to judge on the distance of like blending the beard in is using the ear. So the bottom half of the tragus, that's my one and a half. Now I've got a one because I've just closed it. I'm going to use the mid of the tragus. Now I've got my 0.5, and I'm going to use the top of the tragus. Now I'm actually going to go a little bit lower because I want to fade this a little bit more. So I'm now going to go back on my one and a half and go like mid lobe. And that's just personal preference of me wanting to blend that beard in a little bit more. So now that I'm done with the uh, sides, that they're all they're blended through, and I've taken it straight down, I'm now going to my scissors. I'm going to comb out the bottom of the beard and this is where we just want to take it straight across but as the customer said he's, he's still he likes the length of his beard so we don't want to go too crazy and take where the chin is, I actually want to go from the underneath. It's where I went previously with the uh, mini clippers and I made this corner, I'm actually going to rest my scissors on him, obviously don't, don't go into him, rest it on him or else you'll cut him up and you just go straight. Don't go into him. Yeah, don't go into him. Yeah, it'll be a bit weird in two ways. One, he'll be he'll be bleeding. Right, and that'll be nice. Don't go into him. <laughs> yeah. No, not. Again, it's just about that steady hand. And the good thing about uh, having a, a square beard instead of a curved one. Is that you know, is that as long as you're going straight, you're going to have those sharp edges. As long as you don't go straight, you don't round yourself off. If I was to recommend anything, I think getting the whole beard trim once, once a month maybe, but uh, where your cheek, well, this part's going to grow instantly. This is going to be back within two days. Yeah, yeah. So if you're able to at home, get like a razor or some clippers, whatever you've got. Just keep on top of that. Yeah, follow the line that I've put in for you. Yeah, as long as you don't yeah. go lower than that line, you'll have no problems. You don't want to. You don't want to keep taking your beard lower and lower and lower yeah, yeah, and then yeah. end up with a chin strap. Yeah. That'd be terrible. Don't want that. No. So as long as you feel confident enough to sharpen up the cheeks, go for it. Cool. Just sharpening it. Getting rid of those random flyaways and really getting those angles in there. When I cut with my scissors, at this, at this stage, I'm only cutting in, in three directions. Up like this, across like this and then up again like this. Yeah. 
You want a bit off the moustache as well, off the upper lip? Yeah. Because we're only trimming up the, giving it a light trim to the moustache, what I do is use the corner of the clippers and just go around the lips. But just so we can eat food again without having to eat his moustache. We're not exactly doing a heavy trim on the moustache. Now it's down to finishing touches. Just got the cutthroat razor. I'm just going to sharpen up the cheeks here. Oh, you're going to knee me in the bollard. Excuse me. I'll be some skill, mate. Keep the, keep the skin taut. And just go down. This just makes it a little bit sharper. And there we are. Lovely jubbly. Let's get some... Uh, We'd like some beard balm in there. So yeah, because I've kind of combed and brushed all the balm that you had in there. Going to be using some old money uh, utility balm. So this balm is just going to moisturise the skin underneath as well as the actual facial hair itself. Hey, I'm Freddy, I'm at uh, Gentleman's and Road, and I'm getting a haircut. Yeah. Sweet, well what we're doing with uh, Freddy's hair is uh, what, I'd say the poster over there, as the people over in Shkordham, they call it executive contour, but we're going to go for a bit more of a messier, surfier version. So what he wants, he wants it a little bit longer on the back and sides than the poster, so we're going to have like a two, two and a half, around the ears and around the bottom of the neck and we're just going to blend our way up. We're going to have like a slight parting on the right side and then just lots of messy texture flicking over to the left. Let's do this. So what I'm going to do is instead of using guards, I'm going to be using the wall cordless clippers. And uh, instead of using any guards, I'm just going to use my matador comb. I know that this comb, if I hold this flat to his head, it's a grade two. So the more I angle the comb out, the longer the hair's going to get like that, as such. So I will be removing all of this weight. Exaggerating the comb as I go up the head, just pull more and more out and remove. I'm gonna do this all around the head. As I make my way from the side of the head to the back of the head, I tilt my comb down to curve itself around the occipital bone. This technique I actually picked up in the uh, old school of barbering, which is taught by the Squaran boys over in Rotterdam. So it's only right to do one of their haircuts by using one of their techniques. going back and forth and as I run the spine of the comb up his head I just over exaggerate now doing like a curve in motion so what I've just swapped out swapped out to now as I've got my uh, my one guard and I've just fully opened and I'm just flicking the back of the neck and you just to, just to make it a little bit neater and they're a little bit sharper. And then I'm just gonna close it and do the exact same. As you can see where I did the clipper over comb, there's like this weight line right around here and then it dips down with the bone. I'm just gonna do some scissor over comb, keeping that static blade, so only moving the thumb. More efficient, more control, and I'm just gonna scissor over comb. Because he's going for a little bit of a, he doesn't, doesn't want to go as short as the executive contour. So we're going for like a bit of a longer, messier version. As I work up the head, instead of 
when I clip over comb, I kept the spine of the comb to the head. This time I'm actually pulling away because I want to keep some length. So that weight line is slowly disappearing. And we're getting a new weight line now up here, which I will connect the top with. So now, moving on to the top, I'm just going to connect the top and the sides and remove any of that excess weight that I've left here. You start seeing the shape of the haircut now as we're getting closer to the end. So yeah, where I scissor overcombed and the left of that bit longer, I can now pick up the hair with my fingers. And there it is. There's the shortest point. There's the there's the longest point, and I just need to connect this gap in between. Well, you, you've done being the man in front of the camera. Now you're the man behind the camera. No, I'm still doing both. Yeah. Are you going to be? Are you going to sing it to be the man telling the man that's holding the camera what to do? The director. No. I see it as more of a, um, I think everyone has their own uh, cutting techniques. I, uh, I really enjoy my freehand. So like that clipper over comb, that was quite like a, you do that by eye. Or well, when it comes to guards, you put your guard on and you take it to a certain level and then you just follow that level all the way around the head. Whereas that clipper over comb, it was, I'm going to take it up here, and I'm going to take it down there, and I'm going to take it at this angle, and I'm going to take it at that angle. It's just, that's more by eye, I think. Everyone has their own their own methods. Probably not going to be taking too much off the fringe on Freddy's hair. Only because you want to leave that a bit longer. For him to spike up and make it more messy and surfer dude. I've now swapped from club cutting to point cutting. Add some texture in there. So what I'm doing here is because I left it that little bit too long, which is always, I feel like it's a, it's a good thing. Better, take it, better have it too long than too short, because you can always go back and take it a bit shorter. Can't, it can't, I've, tried, I've given it a shot, try and glue her back on it, never really worked. Same thing with cooking, if you put too much salt, you can't take it back. Exactly. Do it a bit at a time, never just do it in one big go. So now just adding some more texture, so I'm point cutting, and as I pull out from the hair, I close the scissors, like that. <laughs> All the scissors add texture, removes weight. Are you German too? Yeah, yeah. Salt spray. Make sure you get it in at those roots for it to hold. It's quite loud. Are you still going to cut or are you checking? So there's, I'm going to cut this area here. I need a point cut, and apart from that, they were sitting quite nice. How's that length, man? Is it a little bit too long? Is that cool? Sweet. So now that now that we've dried his hair off, and it's taken the we've got the desired length. There's just a couple of finishing touches I want to make. There's like a weight line here, where the top meets the, the sides. This little weight line. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my shears, gonna balance it on my three fingers, and I'm gonna do this motion. Basically what this is doing, as I pull out, I'm gonna close my scissors again. All this does is it just breaks up that line.
now down here where it dips down with the bone. I can just see that there's a little bit of weight there that I just want to take out. At the end of every haircut, I just like to have a good look around the head and see what I do and don't like about it. See if I can change it up. I'm actually going to swap to my, my Jack Dean comb. It's a little bit finer than the, the Matador comb. Just means I can get in there that little bit more. And around this side of the ear, I'm actually going to go even that little bit finer. I'm going to use my wall comb. Now this cone is just that little bit finer than that cone now. So I'm getting smaller and smaller in cones. Combs. The reason I'm going that little bit smaller is because around around the ear, I just want to get in that real nice and tight. I think that's what makes the difference between most barber shops is that at the end of the haircut, some people just go, yep, that's good enough, away he goes. Whereas if there's a little blemishes, customers are gonna like other, like the customers, his mates are gonna see that. You wanna make sure that you do a good job so he comes back and then his mates come here and it's these little adjustments that can make a big deal. Sweeps, you can see how I've got that grade two around the edge and we just blend our way up. And I've taken it down to like a one and a half. Nice one. Sweet. Let's get some wax. I'm using this uh, Layerite cream, matte cream. What I like to do is really, again, get it in those roots. That's all that matters really, get it in those roots. I actually get a little bit more. Styling the hair like this can really like show how much texture I put in there. get that more messier version of the executive contour. Sweet bro. Perfect. Yeah, we are, man. Yeah. Best looking surgeon down south. Let's go and wash my hands. Ready when you are. Oh, you're recording? Oh, this is awkward, eh? What's up, Beard Brand? Charlie here, Jones and Rogues. I've uh, got my man Piers in my chair. Uh, we're gonna sort out his hair, sort out this messy surfer hair, and we're just gonna take it nice and neat behind the ears. So what I'm doing to start, start off, I'm just gonna wet down all of Piers' hair. Comb it into shape. I'm gonna lick it. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna suck it. I'm just gonna, just gonna wet it down. Sweet. So to start off, what I'm gonna do, this is the direction we want the hair to fall in. So I don't want to worry about this just yet. So I'm just gonna section that off. That's just behind the ear. Just comb that away. Don't need to worry about that just yet. I'll deal with that when I get there. There we go. So I'm gonna section off. The whole back. Come on, Carlos, mate. You made me feel, man. <laughs> so what I've done is, from behind the ears, sectioned off all the way around. So let's only deal with the back. This is gonna get dizzy. I keep moving around. <laughs> and action. Take two. Take a section straight down the center. So you can't watch it because then... Not, I'm going to pull it out straight from the head. Which one? Bug, bug, bug one or whatever? Bug one. You've got to watch until the end anyway. You've got to watch it to the end. I haven't watched it to the end, but... You but watch it all. So you, here, yeah. Your opinion will change so many times. Watch it to the end. You reckon? Yeah, that's what happened oh, to me. Is it? Why have you made him change it to? This is your fuck up. My fault. Yeah. 
Well, it's not. I, I, that's not what I said, but he's just, I don't know. Maybe I'm too foreign. He doesn't understand. I'm too what I said. foreign. Wow. <laughs> Mess of my aura that's bang out of order. Are you joking? I'm on fucking all over, mate. This is not. Charles, <laughs> this is, uh, I don't think you're going what I've done is I'll now take a section directly down the centre of the head from the crown to the bottom and I've just followed my guideline all the way. So I've got some old and new section. Pick them both up. Sweet. All those people that were like, oh, we're going to retire. We're going to retire Antelope. Lovely little town. Really quiet. There's my guideline. Basically, this technique that I'm doing now is just uniform layers going straight down the head. So now that I've done my sections going from top to bottom, uh, ver vertically, I'm now going to go horizontal. I'm going to follow this guideline here. They thought it was going to be the same that was there one, didn't they? Yeah. Like What's the other one with the priest? The Jim, Jim something massacre. Jim Jones. Jim Jones. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Is this on Netflix? Weird, I think that that one. Yeah, I think you, there's something on Netflix about, about that. Jim Jones. Yeah. What, what I'm saying, Gino, is like I don't know how I've never heard of it. Oh, look at like a little girly laugh. <laughs> So I've got my baseline of this size. So I'm going to take some new hair, comb up with my new with my uh, baseline. There we go. And you can see all this hair here is my baseline. And just take it all the way down. So what doing these sectioning, what this does is just make sure it's all even. So I've gone vertical and I've made sure my line goes from top to bottom. Now I'm just going to make sure my guide goes from left to right. So I'm going to pull it straight out. There's the guide. Sweet. And there we go, what I've just done there is followed my guideline from top to bottom and from left to right. Now what I'm going to do is, just for the ends, get my, my wide tooth comb, comb it out, and just glide my scissors through the ends, point cutting it. Makes it a little bit more messy, a little bit more choppy. We're not looking for a, a proper slick, uniform slick back. So what I'm doing now is I'm moving on to the side. I'm still talking about in the air, I'm going to take it section by section. Like a crash. Pull it out. You can see my guideline underneath that. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. See my guideline underneath that? Yeah. Nice. That's what I'm going to be following. Pulling the hair back. Right, this is going to be my slow. So don't judge on it. Already judging. Yeah. So, so take some of the old section and the new section. Find your baseline. It's in there. I'll get that again for you. Music, yeah. Oh yeah, it is a Lil Pump, mate. Of course it is. Yeah? It's Lil Pump, of course it is. Have you seen Kanye's new shoes? He's modeling them, but he's getting naked women to model them for him. No. So they're not wearing any clothes but his trainers. Really? Yeah, yeah. Even Kim K's naked wearing his shoes. Really? I'm not even joking, yeah. He's got his... You're gonna get a bit of course you are. Kim K, you like a bit of Kim K, don't you? I do, mate. I like, I like her sister, Chloe. So now we're moving on to the top. So I've done the two sides in the back and it all nicely sweeps behind the ears and sits back. So now I've just got to connect the top to it. So what I'm going to do is from the left side of the head, section it all the way down to the right side. Food. And I'm just going to pick up my section. Follow this baseline. Baseline. And I'm going to be making it, as I get towards the hairline, I'm gradually making it get longer and longer. I'm now just going to go through it with my scissors, taking out some of the extra bulk, well, adding some texture. 
I'm going to be using some Beard Brand Tea Tree Sea Salt Spray for my mayonnaise because got that messier style salt spray will go perfectly with it. Really brings out those curls, makes it real messy. As a sweet bro, pour off a messy. He looks at the market and he's thought it's not Legend, many like, Portuguese nice. models out there that are like bearded. And, do, 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 do. and there's a gap, and I'm gonna fill it. Happy? Yeah, super happy, man. Hey. Nice. Right. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, live in pool and um, get my hair cut today. Uh, Charlie's doing it, the one and only. Sure am. Come and see him. Let's do this. Sweet. What we're doing for Bo is we're redoing a 0.5, learning our way up, keeping this fairly disconnected. He likes to keep all this just going forwards. A lot of texture, real messy. And then when it comes to the beard, we're just going to run a grade one over it, leave it to a point, and then just line up the cheeks and the uh, bottom of the neck. So what I'm doing, I've got my uh, war icons, 0.5 guard, and I'm just taking it just below that occipital bone, and I'm taking it straight across. So you're giving Craig housing advice. Yeah. Same guard, just take it to the uh, temple. <laughs> And blend our way down. <laughs> Silence in the barbershop. shop. <laughs> now I've got my war icons with my one guard. And where that 0.5 line is, I'm just gonna flick it. Flicking it in a, like a C motion, so flat, hit, flick. That kind of motion. So I'm flat underneath the line, I hit the line, and then I flick off it. Now I've got my 0.5 guard again, and I'm just gonna fully open, the, fully open up the lever, and then just close ever so slightly. And I'm just flicking that line in between that one and 0.5. Josh, mate, you're such a lad. Such a sesh Such a sesh So now I'm back to my work cons again with the uh, one guard, except it's fully open. Close it, ever so slightly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Do you want a video right now, mate? Yeah. Wave to mum. Yeah. Hi, mum. Mum. <laughs> <laughs> You should have come earlier, man. You'd been on oh, video. Yeah. <laughs> now I've swapped out to my uh, wall comb. And I'm just doing some flip over comb in the very end to, to blend it out. So I've now moved over to scissor over comb, using the wide tooth side of my comb. And I'm just blending out that clip over comb I did. Sweet, so with the top, we're actually leaving it disconnected with the sides and we're going to have it just all going forwards towards the hairline, messy and choppy. So what I'm going to do is take the tooth of my comb and from the centre, I'm actually going to angle off to either side. Centre again. Let's make that triangle a little bit neater. So the rules are kind of a big deal in the world of Nice. That's the section we're going to make. Start from this side. Use the uh, fine side of my comb. Angle out. The hole is where my scissor over comb was. And as we get closer and closer to the front, just angle it out so it gets longer and longer. <laughs> off the front, we won't be taking that much off. Now, now to the left side, doing the exact same thing. This master ratio would say. Keep your sections clean. Yeah, we'll just have vodka in it. Yeah, just bring it in, but no, it's just off too late. Yeah. So what I'm doing now is the sides that I've connected, there's just a, a gap in the middle. And that's the hair that I'm cutting right now. Yes, there it is. Point cut that. Next section. Run across. We're getting close to the front now, and this is where I want to leave it that little bit longer. Pirate so Rocky. Like pirate Rush. Yeah, I love feeling like a pirate. And there we are. That is the top cut. What I'm now going to do is dry it off, and I might add some texture when it's dry. So do this. Because we have a, uh, a messier style, I'm actually going to use some blank slate sea salt spray. Basically, it just gives it that matte dry finish. And add some texture. <laughs> so what I'm now using is some uh, powder grip. And dandruff. And dandruff. <laughs> That's what it is. So what are you going to do with the beard again? So we're just going to run a grade one over it. He wants to run a grade one over okay. it. Keep it nice so and lining and up and do a grade one. That's it, yeah. Make, it, make it sharp. Sure. A maintenance beard trim. 
for the modern day estate agent. That's it. Sell, sell, sell. Can estate agents have big bids? Yeah. You can. Yeah. It's not I a think as long as, you, as long as you look like smart. Smart. Because that's, that's like, it's not a requirement. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do now, got more day tillers, and where his Adam, what I tend to do when it comes to a natural beard line, is where the Adam's apple is. I just take it just above it. So there's the apple. See, so now connecting the other side of the beard line. So, Adam's apple, just above. So what I've done is I've just lined Bella up with my elegance gel on the, the cheek hairline. I'm going to go over it with the cutthroat razor. Keeping the skin taut as I go over the razor. Great work. Sweet, now we're in with the grade one. Is it cutting? Yeah. Happy? Can't see them, but thumbs are up. <laughs> <laughs>